Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today I am doing a Byredo house review. I am going over 26 Byredo fragrances with you guys. And if you are new to my channel, I just wanna let you know I am brutally honest. I don't hold back. I am not the reviewer that just simply says everything is great. What could not be me. Yeah, anyway, that's it. I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm gonna begin with my first love from Byredo, and this is Gypsy Water. Honestly, this is one of the first perfumes that comes to mind when I think of chic, minimalistic, model off duty, clean, it girl, etc. I am so obsessed with that kind of scent profile and vibe and attitude when it comes to fragrance. Like, I'm having a moment with that. And Gypsy Water is just the queen of that aesthetic. It Byredo just does this fragrance so perfectly, in my opinion. It brings a smile to my face every single damn time I smell this perfume. I could easily have this be my signature scent, wear it every single day, I'd be so freaking happy. I'm never not in the mood for this. This is so fresh and pretty and natural smelling. You get a beautiful pine needle and juniper note in here. That's not too much. It's not giving you Christmas tree. It's not like you're in the woods, but you get that breath of fresh air near like a juniper forest kind of vibe. You get a nice natural little bit of a lemon at the top and it's grounded with a really soft, creamy, smooth sandalwood. The vanilla that you get in here is not a gourmand kind of vanilla. It's nothing too sweet. It comes off very natural. It's like a thinned out vanilla, just adding the perfect light amount of sweetness to this. It has an elegant, pretty, chic, powdery quality to the fragrance. It's also a little bit balsamic, some incense to give it some more character. And this perfume, seriously, was the gateway for me to Juniper Vanillas. That's literally one of my favorite note compositions and perfumery. I am absolutely obsessed. This is also a massive compliment getter for me. I'm not kidding when I say every single time I wear it, I get a compliment. And I know why. It's so damn likable and pretty. I low-key think people are being a little extra when they complain about the performance of Gypsy Water. Yes, it's nothing, you know, that's going to last an incredible amount of time. It's not a beast mode, anything like that. But I would say this is a moderate performer. And also, like, I'm wondering, like, how much are you spraying, though? Like, are you... That's not gonna do it, honey. It's not gonna do it. So I overspray with this one, as I normally do with the majority of my perfumes. Obviously, it depends on the perfume. And even when I think it's very soft on myself, I'll be surprised because people will still continue to compliment me. This lasts about four to five hours on me, which is okay. I definitely have fragrances in my collection that last a lot worse. So I'm not mad at it. Would I love it to like literally last all day long? Yes, absolutely, because it's one of my favorite scents in my collection. But also I think people hate on it just a little bit too much. So overspray, moisturize, all of that. And I am telling you, this is one of the most beautiful, chic, just pretty perfumes I've ever smelled. I absolutely adore it. It's literally something I'm gonna have in my collection for life. The next one I'm gonna talk about is actually a new launch from this year, and this is De Los Santos. This is a nice smelling fragrance, like the scent itself. It doesn't smell like a fragrance so much as it does nature. So like I said, the scent itself is nice, but it's not something that I would personally gravitate towards to wear. The sage is definitely the strongest, most prominent note that you are getting in this fragrance. And although it's not listed, I really do get a tea vibe, like a aromatic, herbal, green, black tea blend. You also get dry palo santo wood and mirabelle plum, giving it a citrus feel. So yeah, if you wanna smell like you just rubbed up on some sage and wood, get this. Blanche, I knew I wasn't gonna like it. <laughs> just from reading the notes, like I literally already knew, but I tried it anyway, because I'm like, it's one of their most popular fragrances, I just need to try it. 
Um, this is like laundry detergent on steroids. This is extremely potent, intense laundry detergent and aldehydes. I of course get the musk, violet, and peony, but that all just comes together to smell like classic soap. I like smelling clean, but not just clean, like not just literal soap. Like I need a wow factor and the scent is just like piercing. It's just like Bam, soap bubbles. The Rose of No Man's Land is pleasant. If I was blindly smelling this, I would absolutely guess that this was a designer fragrance from Dior. It really gives off those kind of vibes. It's simple, crowd-pleasing, in the category of a common designer rose perfume for women. So although it's pretty, I don't think it's worth the price because you can find so many other perfumes at a much more accessible cost that really vibe with this kind of perfume. So this is obviously mainly rose and it's a nice rose. It's nothing too heavy or mature with some pink pepper and then you get that touch of raspberry bloom, which you know, that fruity rose is a very common DNA within designer perfumes. So nice, I think a lot of people would find it pleasant, but I mean, like it's really not doing much for me. Next up is Accord Oud, and I was pleasantly surprised by this one. I really did not expect for this to be my cup of tea because I'm usually not into fruity leather fragrances separately. I like those notes, but together it's just not for me. This is a sexy fall winter going out kind of perfume, totally unisex. The leather and oud are very smooth and the blackberry adds this juicy, yummy, jammy sweetness. It also has this kind of fine wine vibe to it. This reminds me of a blueberry dessert wine that I had years ago at a wedding and it was the best, most delectable wine I have ever had. There's also saffron listed, giving it a little bit more of a unique touch. Very well done, and I'm really surprised that I don't hear more people talking about this one. I think it's really underrated. I'm personally on the fence trying to decide if I'm gonna buy a bottle or not. I thoroughly enjoy it. I'm very impressed with it, but I'm gonna continue to keep wearing it before I make up my mind. I'm just very thorough, you know? Like, before bringing in a scent, I really have to ask myself, like, does this smell like me? Regardless, I think it's great. Also, it has quite good performance. Just a little bit on my wrist was absolutely radiating off of me. 1996, this is mainly amber, patchouli, and leather. And there's something in here that comes off vegetal to me. I don't know what it is, uh, but I'm definitely not loving that part of it. <laughs> the leather is slightly animalic. It's aromatic, has a slight powderiness to it, and it's unisex, but definitely leaning masculine in my opinion. It does have a dated feel to it and grungy. Like I picture a guy with smeared eyeliner, kind of like messy dark hair and a leather jacket wearing this. Um, and he's involved with voodoo <laughs> somehow. I don't know, it, it's the vibe, it's the picture. Not a fan of the opening, but the dry down does get better. It really tones down on the vegetal and animalistic side of it. It gets warmer, more powdery, and the notes just seem to blend together nicer. Super Cedar should have been called Cedar Whisper. Cedar water, quiet cedar. There is nothing super about this. Honestly, this is cedar and musk with like an iso -y super kind of vibe. I barely smell anything. I have to put my nose up to my skin and even then it practically smells like nothing. It's like watery cedar and musk just traces. And I haven't smelled this fragrance, but from what I've heard of it, I would imagine something from like eccentric molecules to smell like this. Personally, don't know about you, but I like to smell my fragrance, so this was a pass. Oud Immortel, definitely masculine, I would say. Oud Patchouli and a slight dirty pineapple vibe. I don't like this at all. It made my nose scrunch up, smoky, dirty, earthy. It's just a combo of notes that do not go well 
together, in my opinion. Um, it's just strange. This was an immediate scrubber for me, like, hell no. Black saffron, I am neutral about. I don't like it, I don't hate it. Leather, juniper berries, I definitely get that green aromatic touch. Saffron, and this is not, you know, your BR540 kind of saffron, this is your bitter, earthy, leathery kind of saffron, and then you also get violet. I barely get the raspberry on my skin. What this smells like to me, if someone who smokes cigarettes dropped their leather jacket on the ground in a juniper forest, and then it just got trampled on, like just covered in dirt and leaves, that's what this fragrance smells like to me. It's interesting, that's for sure, but not for me. Lil Fleur is way too rose heavy for me. I honestly can't stand it personally. It's a very realistic, deep, red rose, which is not my style at all. If you're obsessed with rose perfumes, maybe you'll be into this, but I'm telling you, you really need to be into rose. Wood and cassis, which kind of comes off like you're getting the rose leaves as well. I get a touch of the saffron and tangerine in the top, giving it a slight bit of sweetness, but that really fades as it dries down. Moving on to mixed emotions. The opening is my favorite part and it does remind me a little bit of Wilhelm's Dear Polly because of that tea note and a little bit of fruity sweetness. Dear Polly is much better though and as it dries down it really distances itself from Dear Polly. I really don't care for this. The opening was nice. I loved that black currant and the fresh burst of tea but very very quickly it gets quite smoky, like you're smoking some kind of meat on a campsite. You get an animalistic leather quality. It's quite green, aromatic, and dirty, woody. Young Rose, I actually quite liked this one. This was my favorite rose fragrance from Byredo. Young Rose is the perfect name for this fragrance because it's a very fresh, natural, pink smelling rose. Nothing too strong or mature. There's a spiciness giving it a lot of character, but it's nothing too strong. It's not a dark spice. The pepper pairing is actually really lovely here. It has a slight powderiness and then you get a clean musk. This is slightly sweet as well, like a lightly sugared rose. I honestly didn't think I was going to be a fan of this fragrance because I don't like rose dominant perfumes, but this is really quite lovely. I don't need a bottle because it doesn't feel like me. It's not my kind of personality. But for those of you who do like your floral, pretty, feminine perfumes, I'd recommend checking it out. It's a linear scent, nothing crazy, but it's also not boring. It's just pretty. Flower Head is all right, in my opinion. I'm not a fan of the green quality in here. It really smells like wet grass. Like I'm biting into it and I can taste it. That and a fresh jasmine and tuberose. I really like how the florals are done in here. They're very natural, crisp, realistic, very fresh. And the tuberose comes off a little bit bubblegummy without smelling fake. That's actually the first time that I've experienced that with a bubblegum tuberose because obviously, Bubble gum is artificial, but this smells like a natural gum note if that was, if there was such a thing. But yeah, like I said, nothing too much, but just a little bit of that kind of undertone. Mumbai Noise, I would describe this to be a more masculine scent for sure. And there is oud in here and it's not a barnyardy kind of oud, but it is definitely the most prominent note that you get. It's a very dark and heavy scent. It has a ambery, leathery undertone from the labdanum, and then I also get dark roast coffee beans. As it dries down, it just continues to get darker, heavier, bitter, smoky in my opinion. It's not my style when it comes to fragrance because it's just too dark. I personally like other notes involved that give it more wearability and style. The opening was like, oh, okay, this is pretty good. But then as it dried down, it was just, it turned into something that I would never wear personally. Velvet Haze, I am not a fan. It comes off a bit funky and strange to me. The notes, in my opinion, just 
don't come together nicely. Firstly, there's a lot of patchouli in here, and I usually enjoy patchouli fragrances, but this combo ain't it. So like I said, a lot of patchouli with musk, chocolate, coconut. Individually, these notes sound great, but together, no. This also smells more on the mature side, and it was definitely a scrubber. La Tulip, beautiful. Um, it's a tulip. <laughs> Nothing more nothing less. If you wear this, you smell like the petals, the stem, the leaves. I personally want more going on in my fragrances and just smelling like a pure tulip isn't me, but I did think that the scent was very pretty. And if you just straight up want to smell like a tulip, this is it, and I think it's quite unique. You don't smell tulip in fragrances too often, let alone straight up smelling like a tulip. Bibliotech, I was so excited to try from the name alone. Like it sounds so romantic, and I love woody fragrances and the idea of like the smell of old books. This is not that at all. This is a plum leather combo which is my absolute enemy when it comes to fragrances. I loathe that combo. It's also slightly powdery. I don't even know why I tried this. If I just looked up the notes, like I wouldn't have even attempted to try this, but whatever. Yeah, it's not for me. Objectively, it's not a bad smell. I, ju I just hate this combo. You know what, let's switch gears here a little bit and talk about something that I absolutely love with my whole heart and soul, Bald of Freak. This is my favorite citrus perfume in my collection. I am absolutely obsessed and I need to get like a 100 milliliter backup bottle because I'm absolutely terrified that L'Oreal is gonna mess with this perfume. Yeah, they bought it out, by the way. Did you guys know that? Well, now you know in case you didn't. Yep, L'Oreal bought by Rado. I'm ecstatic. Anyway, this is the aromatic woody citrus of my dreams. Oh my gosh. It is absolutely exquisite on its own and it's also fantastic for layering. I love this citrus because it is very natural smelling. This is not a cleaning product kind of citrus. And the sweetness with the combo of lemon and vetiver is so freaking unique. I've never smelled anything like it. It's incredible. It's not too heavy on that sweetness, but it's just the right amount where it keeps pulling you back and it's freaking addictive because all you want to do is keep going back and smelling yourself. This one actually has quite good performance. This will last me like seven hours, which is just another bonus for it being a citrus perfume. And there are a multitude of florals in here. I can't pick anything out distinctively, but you get a beautiful, just blended to perfection concoction in here. A fresh musk, the vetiver is an earthy note that still is very clean. It's just, it just gives this fragrance edge. It gives it character. You smell cool. You smell chic. Again, this fits within the same category as Gypsy Water, where it's like it girl, clean girl aesthetic, model off duty, etc. I'm all about it. It's slightly fresh spicy. Oh my gosh, I adore it. This would work pretty much year round, except for really cold days. It would make an amazing signature scent. And it's just very agreeable. It's so likable and you're not gonna offend anybody wearing this. You smell so freaking chic, put together timeless. This is the person where it doesn't matter what year it is, your wardrobe, is just on point and your overall style is just timeless okay we look back at pictures whenever and just be like what an icon and i find it to be quite addicting the more i wear this like the more i think about it and the more i want to wear more so good moving on to slow dance it's not me it smells like there's some sort of light fruit note in here i would guess plum even though it's not listed that's just the vibe I get, and I think mixed with the Opopanax, it's just not my favorite. I can also smell cognac, vanilla. It's not heavy on the vanilla though. It's powdery, it has a softer presence. You get a touch of patchouli. It has character, it's unique for sure, so I do appreciate it, but I'm not a personal fan. This next one, I'm gonna probably upset some people, but whatever, uh, Mojave Ghost. I think personally is kind of a little bit odd. As a scent, 
to be in a perfume. It smells like nicely scented skincare. Okay, is it just me? That's it, like it smells like nicely scented skincare. I find it kind of weird, not the actual literal scent, but just like as a perfume, because this, this scent is so associated with skincare or hair care to me. I get mainly the magnolia, violet, musk, and fruit, but it's not a fresh, natural smelling kind of fruit. It's like a artificial skincare, hair care type of fruit note. And then I get citrus in the opening. So yeah, I personally don't get the hype with that one. Pulp? is a very good perfume. The fig isn't for me, that's not my kind of note, but it does smell really good. Kind of gives me a more grown up version of Mugler's Angel Eau Crossier 2020. It's fig, red apple, praline, black currant, so it's very fruity and sweet, and then you get a little bit of cedar and cardamom to ground it. Sundazed, I was so excited to try, because hello, cotton candy citrus, sounds so fun. This is literally citrus and neroli. This is loud in your face, lemon, neroli, and orange. And it's not realistic, it is not fresh. This is through and through your cleaning product artificial lemon pledge kind of citrus. The jasmine and musk are just supporting notes. I barely smell them. And then the cotton candy note, I was so disappointed by this. I could smell it out of the atomizer but once I sprayed it, it literally disappeared within seconds. Big fat letdown. So if you want a citrus from Byredo, definitely go with Ball of Freak. Now I'm gonna move on to talk about several of their Night Veil collection fragrances, which are their Extrait de Parfum concentration scents. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is Cellier. I love this perfume. It was love at first sniff. Before I even put it on my skin, I just smelled the atomizer and I was like, I already knew I was gonna end up buying a bottle, and I did. It's currently on its way. This is in the same overall family as La Labo Centol 33, just to give you an idea, but this is smooth. It's sexy, not nearly as aromatic and spicy. This has a very light, natural sweetness to me coming from who knows where, but this has a real resinous balsamic feel to it. And it's not listed, but it also has this coconut meat kind of creaminess, but it also overall has a dry presence. It's perfectly blended, totally unisex, has good performance. The leather in here is done to perfection. It's not animalic or harsh in the slightest. I get a blast of sandalwood, a subtle fresh spiciness. I adore the cashmere and birch in here. Just from reading the notes, I would assume that this would be very intense and masculine, but I'm telling you it is so freaking smooth and sexy. And it also just smells extremely natural. I am obsessed. I'm so obsessed. Like I love sandalwood and perfumes and this has a lot of sandalwood in it. And the overall feeling of balsamic and creamy and dry, like, oh my gosh, it's so good. And I cannot wait for it to get here. This one was actually my favorite of the Night Veils collection. Reine de Nuit is again too deep and heavy of a rose for me. I pretty much just get a spicy, heavy rose and patchouli, so I really don't care for this. It has a touch of black currant to sweeten it up just a little bit, nothing crazy. Definitely not worth the price. There are a million heavy rose dominant fragrances on the market for a much better price that deliver the same kind of vibe. Next up is Tobacco Mandarin, and this one is pretty good. Dark amber, deep wood, tobacco, some leather. It's spicy from the cumin, and that's not my favorite. It's not too strong on my skin, luckily. I can detect it 
but it's not like too much, but it's also not my favorite. And some mandarin to give it a light sweetness. The mandarin ties in really nicely with the resinous notes. First and foremost, I get a dark amber. It's a darker, heavier scent that's still quite smooth and it's not overwhelmingly heavy or thick. It's unisex, it has great performance, quite unique. I won't be picking up a bottle because I don't feel like it's a need, but I do think it's good. So if it sounds like your kind of style, grab a sample, try it out. And the last one I'm gonna review for you guys is their newest launch, Vini Antique. And again, this is one that I knew I wanted just from smelling it from the decant. It's quite a unique fragrance. I haven't smelled anything like it. Honestly, the closest thing that I've smelled that vibes with it would be Zerjoff's Bouquet Ideal. And although it is quite unique, it's nothing too complex or out there. I really do think that a lot of people would enjoy this. It does smell niche though, for sure. It smells rich, well executed. It has a smooth booziness to it. You really get the vibe just from the look of this deep, ambery, aged looking juice. In the opening, I get this musk that's sparkling. It pops and a light amount of plum that's just perfect. And again, it's usually not a note that I enjoy, but I do like it in here. It's nothing too heavy or deep. It just adds the perfect light amount of sweetness, like an undertone that you would experience in a wine. It's woody and I definitely get the aged antique vibe. It doesn't smell old, dusty, dated at all. I'm just saying I can experience that overall old book or rustic wood kind of smell. And then of course we have the vanilla. It's a thinned out resinous kind of vanilla, lightly sweetened, not too much. Totally unisex. If I were to put a picture to this, I think a really hot woman, even though a guy, like I said, can totally wear this, a hot woman with a smoky eye, tousled hair, and she's going out to a bar in the evening in New York City. It's quite sexy and mysterious, actually. That price, though, is crazy, okay? And I know that Cellier is the same price, but I got Cellier for a discount second hand. Vini Antique is a brand new fragrance. I could not find this anywhere for any slight little bit of a discount. So I will not be pulling the trigger unless slash until I do find someone that wants to part ways with this bottle. Because even though I love it, I'm like, <sighs> That's painful. And I will say that it does have really good performance. Yes, it is an extrait to parfum, but like $330 for a 50 ml. So yes, I absolutely recommend the fragrance, but you know, only if this is something within your budget, of course. And that finally completes my Byredo house review. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you want to see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.